Hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by Kaisha Davenport, the bar director at Tanam, Narrative Cuisine in Somerville, Massachusetts. Tonight, we're making spritzes with Aperol, catching up on the restaurant and bar scene, and sharing tips the pros use to make great drinks at home. When you register, if you click through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and purchase the Spritz Cocktail Kit, then you have all the ingredients you need right there. Profits from those kits go to Off Their Plate. This is a great charity. They buy meals from restaurants that need the business and distribute them to frontline workers and others in need. We have a great playlist by, of local music by the team at Hereby in Cambridge. And all the while, we'll be taking your questions from the chat. Of course, tonight for spritzes, you're gonna need a bottle of Aperol. Um, in the traditional spritz, you'll need some sparkling wine, soda water, and usually an orange is traditional for garnish. For that sparkling wine, Prosecco is often used. I like a, 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 a traditional method Cava myself. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. You can use American sparkling wine or champagne. I wouldn't use those really funky grape grower champagnes. I'd save those to drink the way they are. Um, but uh, a light kind of, um, you know, well-charged sparkling wines, all you need to make the spritz go. Uh, for the spicy variation, in addition to the Aperol sparkling wine and soda water, uh, you're gonna want some Scotch bonnet peppers, uh, also known as habanero, uh, simple syrup, and then we'll need a little lime juice and lime for garnish. The ice that we'll use tonight will be the regular crushed ice variety, the kind that we get out of these uh, great little molds that um, make a, something very close to a one-by-one -one ice cube. And then for glassware, very traditional to go with a, uh, like a white wine glass. Um, it's also really cool to do spritzes, I think, in a tall glass. So we'll show you a way to do both of those. Um, other equipment that you'll need, if you want to do a flash preparation of this habanero simple syrup, um, you can bust out the blender if you're home doing drinks in your kitchen, like a lot of us. Um, that'll be a good way to go. I'm gonna also show you how to kind of muddle the habanero straight into the uh, simple syrup with just a muddler and a tin, or even if you don't have a muddler, you can use like a wooden spoon. Um, but when you do that, either way you do it, you're gonna really want a tea strainer for this gig, uh, something to kind of catch the, the bits and keep it out of the drink, get all that flavor and keep it clean. Uh, you'll need either jiggers like we use in the bar room or a tablespoon. Um, remember, tablespoon measure is half an ounce. So if the recipe calls for two ounces, that's going to be four tablespoons. A little faster with the jiggers if you have them, um, but very accurate to use uh, measuring uh, spoons as well. You need a cutting board and a knife, and I always like to keep a little plate around so I can use my tongs to move uh, my garnish around as need be. All right, we're set. Uh, I can't wait to get started with Kaisha Davenport. She's a worker owner at Tanam Narrative Cuisine in Somerville, Massachusetts, and the founder of Bar Noir Boston. She began bartending in 2009 and moved to Boston in 2016, where she championed direct assistance, mutual aid, and community organizing. She's a member for the Boston Ujima Project, a place-based community fund which battles investment racism and is also raising funds for a home for BIPOC femmes. She supports Pride Extended, a new initiative connecting campaigns focused on Black trans and non-binary health and wellness in Boston. Kaisha is an excellent bartender dedicated to the community and also a lover of all things spritz cocktails. You can support her directly during the program by hitting the tip jar. Her Venmo is at Kai-Davenport. Welcome, Kaisha. Hi, Jackson. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Oh, so good to see you. We've got about 500 people on who want to get to spritz in. But first, I was just hoping I could ask you a couple uh, of questions about how it's going. Is Tanam open? Yes, Janam is open. We are offering our Kamayan box to go. Kamayan is a traditional Filipinx feast. It includes over 20 elements that typically we lay out on a table and you eat with your hands. Now you can pick it up at Tanam uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in a nice little pizza box to go. That's terrific. You doing any cocktails to go with that? We have some cocktails to go. We aren't doing them right now, but According to New England, it's about to be patio season. So expect some new right. cocktails to go happening soon for sure. Well, that's really exciting. Hey, I just wanted to ask you again, can you tell us a little bit more about Bar Noir Boston? I find this incubator that you started really fascinating. Um, are there any ways we can directly support that initiative? Definitely. Um, Bar Noir Boston is a long held dream of mine. 
to connect Black hospitality professionals in Boston to the kinds of opportunities that uh, typically we haven't really seen for uh, Black hospitality folks in Boston. We lost oh, almost half of Black-owned businesses in the country in the last year alone. And I wanted to create a direct opportunity where I can collaborate with really dope professionals and, and have some fun and make our dreams happen. And at the same time, really transform the food and beverage space in Boston. So I would say first things first, go ahead and head over to Instagram. Uh, follow me at Barnoir Boston. We got some really exciting articles, some pop-ups, some cocktail releases coming up soon. And that's the best way to directly support the work as we continue to build out uh, this vision. Well, that's really exciting. Thank you for your hard work on that. It's, uh, Thank you. It's really awesome. Should we get to Spritzen? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was so happy when we uh, just kind of bonded over the idea of, of spritzes and you told me about some of the different ones that you're doing. I'm going to take us through just a simple one first, and I'm going to do mine in a highball. Okay. Um, I sort of feel like this drink, if you get it just right, it kind of mixes itself. We don't need as many tools uh, of the trade to, to get this one right. But the first I'm going to make my garnish, I'm just going to do a little half moon of orange so I know it can fit down the side of that glass by, um, by just taking the end here off of the orange. And then cutting it down in half. And this is a fun one. Like you can do orange. I uh, I saw some tangelos today, which I almost grabbed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can all, you always do slices of grapefruit or blood orange as well. And now that I have those, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna build it right in my glass. The best, right? So two ounces of apérol. We took uh, some advanced questions on Aperol. I think one that was really pressing for people who realized they had this whole big bottle now and they're just gonna make a couple of drinks tonight. How long will it last? And how should I store it? Um, you know, it's, it's, it, that's not usually our problem in the bar, right? We, we're racing no. through it, you know? Uh, it's recommended actually, once you get one of these open to try to drink it in about four months. And that's just because it actually will lose flavor, not because it will spoil per se, but. Um, and then a bit of soda water, I'm gonna do an ounce. And then I'm gonna do two ounces of uh, this beautiful traditional kava that I love making champagne cocktails of all sorts with. Yeah, I, was, I, I, I noticed that. I was expecting Prosecco, but it was really exciting to see some kava action happening. And they're all a little different. I think that just the, you want to avoid the funkiest wine. And this is a drink too. I'm measuring this time. But now that you see that those two ounces, two ounces, one ounce are kind of like right there at the line on that glass, right? You can get pretty good at home at making this one, you know, without uh, without any measuring tool other than your eyes, right? So, and then I'm just going to drop my ice very carefully right in and you can sort of see it kind of, it activates. Oh yeah. You know? yeah. And because it's effervescent and depending on the size of your glass, if you want to add a little more sparkling wine, you can or a little more soda. I like that ratio just like that. So I'm going to put a straw down the side. Yeah, that's the orange right in. There she blows. Such a stunning color to this cocktail, really. Oh, yeah. This just this is summer in a yeah. glass. Or dreaming of summer on, on what might be a 19 degree night tonight in Boston. <laughs> Cheers to you, Kaisha. Cheers, Jackson. Mm. Never fails, never misses. Ah, so, rarely you can get something like that complex and that sort of like robust and just, it's so simple to make. You don't really need to use any of the fancy techniques. You just gotta use great ingredients, I guess. Definitely. Um, 
couple of folks asking, can they use Campari in this? Do you do much of the lesser known Campari scripts? You can definitely use Campari in this. I would say if you are, if your flavor profile leans toward a, a higher level of bitterness, a little more bitterness in your spritz, Campari is definitely for you. I really love Aperol because it's just got just that really perfect balance of a little bit of bitterness, but also that sweetness and the orange that just balances things out. But you can definitely yeah. use Campari. A little softer and rounder. I've, I've right. sometimes sweetened Campari with something else to get that effect, but that's a whole different flavor. You're right about that. That astringency that we love that Campari um, bursts <laughs> through yes uh, like a negroni with right you know um i think uh you know the americano is spritzy campari drink of a sort you know where you where you split the uh vermouth and campari together with with soda water and you can right. soup that up and go sparkling wine or you can add gin you know it's um and you're into a whole little family of drinks off that way but that kind of you know that that's sort of where like aperol sits for me is that like when campari and sweet vermouth become that perfect other thing than the two things that went into it. Aperol already is, you know. Yes, Aperol, um, it's 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 already it's set up for you to be successful no matter what you do to it for the most part. Um, taking another quick technical question from the chat, they're asking if uh, they could have built that right over the ice. I don't like to do that. You can, um, especially when I'm going in a tight glass like this. Uh, I like to put the ingredients in so they have a little time to to mix around themselves and not kind of get trapped in layers um, and then dropping the ice where it completes the process wine glass i think it wouldn't matter quite as much to me but um no we and like what if the doorbell rings and you gotta like run over <laughs> and do something else and then your drink is melting you know I, I, whenever you can kind of like you know the ice in last um makes a lot of sense so um and a quick answer to a question about soda water club water they're generally like synonyms for us in the cocktail where that might be a little bit of a, of a basic view but um you know sparkling water club soda you know the, what are there some other terms for it i'm just like blanking out um the the ones we really like to use if they have any like salinity it comes from a good healthy salt source like a sea salt or something um you know if it has anything any, any if it has any weird ingredients in it like some club packaged club sodas do i, I try to avoid it but um just you want the gas trapped in the water that's pretty much it um cool just checking the chat i'm gonna have another sip i guess we should start talking about some variations on our way to uh the spicy meatball that we've got for everybody we have a lot to do on that one so why don't you take us through kind of some of our prep steps and go we'll go nice and slow for everyone um depending on which method they're making it sure thing so we are going to make the scotch bonnet spritz i am going to be using a blender so if you have a blender at home i don't know about you but i've made more cocktails in my blender than i have smoothies and juices <laughs> what I told myself, that's what I was gonna get the blender for, we're gonna change our lives. You've got a blender, you probably don't use it either. Um, but also if you don't have a blender, uh, Jackson, you're gonna be using a muddler, is that right? I am gonna use a tin and a muddler, yeah. Nice, all right. Um, we're, gonna need, we're gonna need our cutting board again. We're gonna need a lime, and that's gonna be our juice and our varnish. You're gonna need some scotch bonnet pepper, of course. And if you have gloves, I would highly recommend, I'd highly recommend using gloves. Once you cut into these, it gets real serious real fast. And uh, I don't know, I have stories about touching uh, peppers with bare hands and they're not nice stories. So just take your time and be careful with your scotch bonnet. Uh, you're also going to need simple syrup. Uh, if you don't have a bottle of simple syrup, equal parts, very hot water to sugar, stirred, swirled in a cup until it's dissolved is going to be just fine. Of course, you need your Aperol and Prosecco. And to strain out your Scotch bonnet syrup from your blender, if you have a tea strainer, that works perfectly fine. And a little funnel, a cup on the side to strain it out in. You don't need a funnel, you don't need a strainer, you just need a good hand to really balance uh, straining off the solids from the liquid. 
I would definitely recommend if you like a spicier scotch bonnet, go ahead and leave the solids in your syrup. If you prefer your spice a little bit on the lighter side, you definitely want to strain that off. You'll need a jigger, ice, ether, got a hand press right here. And I think we covered everything if I'm not mistaken. And your glass of choice, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am very excited about this spritz variation. We have a couple of versions of what I would call an infusion at Tanang. And just make sure I touch that. And uh, this one is super cool. It's very quick to do. Scotch bonnet, just a little bit of background on it, um, is indigenous to the Amazon, uh, modern day Brazil. And through a little bit of trade and a lot of colonization, it's made its way into the Caribbean and is a very popular pepper to use in cuisines and sauces and marinades. Um, it's not a habanero. It's a little bit smaller than a habanero and it actually packs quite a lot more heat than a habanero. If you were to measure uh, peppers, you use what you call Scoville units. And a jalapeno is about one to 4,000, which is why my spicy margaritas Never as spicy as I need it to be. Um, a habanero is going to give you about 200,000 to 300,000 Scoville heat units. And a scotch bonnet is clocking in at 300,000 to 400,000 Scoville heat units. But it's crazy because this thing is actually really fruity. It's got lots of fruit notes to it as well. And I think that's why it just plays really great in Caribbean cuisine because it is, it's got flavor as well as that heat, that spice that people are looking for. Do you, do you use a lot of scotch bonnet in uh, your cooking or your cocktails, Jackson? I used to make a salsa that had a little mm. bit of scotch yeah. bonnet in it. It was a mango salsa. Um, and then I did it once for a party and it called for quadrupling the recipe. And I quadrupled the scotch bonnet, which is horrifying <laughs> because it, it like a little scotch bonnet does the same thing in a giant <laughs> tub of salsa as it does in a small cup, you know, just keeps... Like, like spirits, how they break down and uh, how, how hot things break down in syrups over time, too. It's sort of the same thing. It's kind of all kinds of reactions going on there that aren't like the same way that you volume up. So um, I try to be a little bit more careful with it. I'm excited to I don't think I've made a cocktail with it. Um, I've used habanero or jalapeno to, you know, for that role before, but I'm excited. Wait, shall we boogie? Do we? Yeah, I'm going to. What am I? I'm. So I don't know if you made your juice ahead of time. I'm going to cut my lime slice and then juice my lime, or should I do my syrup first? What do you? Um, I would cut your lime first because if you, I mean, it's all going to go in the drink anyway. But if you cross that over with the scotch bonnet, it's going to get it's going to get quite a bit spicy. I'm just going to set my orange slices over here. Clear that away. And I am going to grab a glove just to work with the scotch I'm gonna go. It. I'm gonna go live without a net and just use my tweezers and hope that. That's real, that's real. <laughs> You're so right about that. When it gets on your hands, it doesn't hurt your hands. But from there, as we know, it can get other places and that's the real uh. threat. All right, we're gonna take, we can take a look at the recipe card while we're doing this for the spicy okay. spritz too. So, and just for if you're blending, I'm just cutting the top off of the scotch bonnet and slicing it lengthwise, getting rid of the seeds. If you are into the spice, you can leave some seeds in. But I'd how do you feel not. about for the the muddling method? Do I need to do that if I'm muddling? Yeah, I, I leave the seeds in for if you're muddling, you're going to want, you're not going to extract as much of that heat so quickly the way you will when it gets blitzed up in a blender. So definitely leave your seeds in. You can take some out if you're wanting to be cautious. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to keep the top of my scotch bonnet too as a little, little additional garnish and just set that to the side. All right, so for our blender. I'm just going to drop the scotch bonnet right in there. And with a fresh for our, friend, for our friends asking, I'm just holding up the scotch bonnet for the yeah. 
folks who are asking on the thread to take a look at it. And if you weren't able to find a Scotch bonnet pepper, Market Basket carries them. A lot of local African markets, Caribbean markets, Asian markets will carry Scotch bonnet, but a habanero, a comparably spicy pepper will be totally fine if you don't have that. But definitely try it when you get across it at some point. So I'm gonna do two ounces of simple syrup mixed up in here with this scotch bonnet. And this should give me a little bit of a milder syrup. Just close that up. And I'm gonna make some noise on the blend. And while she's blending, I'm just crushing more than just pressing i'm crushing the pepper open and moving it around in the glass in the tin just a little bit um get as much flavor out of it here and a la minute as i can oh yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be wild i was gonna be excited You have a strainer, you have a funnel. Got a little guy here. Woo. Woo. We use a lot of peppers at Tanam, and there's there's this particular wing called Bicolano, which is a spicy coconut. You make it with um, Thai chilies. And if you are standing by the dish pit when those pots get rinsed, mm -hmm. everyone is hacking. Don't do it to yourself. It, I just got a little triggered when I opened up uh, my blender here with that scotch bonnet. When I strain, I'm going to strain it right out into my jigger. How much am I, am I taking out for, um, for each cocktail I'm making? You're going to strain out a half an ounce of your Scotch bonnet syrup for your jigger measurement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about that. Cool. Okay. The coast is clear. I'm going to take my gloves off. Off. <laughs> All right, and I am going to use a wine glass, go traditional here. If you have a stemless wine glass, totally cool too. I put, I put together my arsenal. I wasn't sure what you were gonna pull out on me, Jackson, so I said, okay. Let me just have a few varieties here. So going straight into this, back to our Aperol, we're gonna add an ounce and a half of Aperol directly to the glass. Kaisha, how long will this syrup last in the fridge after what you don't use right now? You're gonna get a solid, solid two weeks. If you leave the solids in the syrup, it's going to get hotter as you go. So just prepare yourself if you choose to leave the solids in there. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a half ounce of Scotch bonnet syrup. Just a note too, a ripened Scotch bonnet is going to have a really nice reddish orange color but the green peppers are perfectly fine to work with as well if you happen to have a green pepper. And Jackson, you already strained up your lime juice, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take a half a lime and go directly right in. Yeah. Ooh, fun times, there we go. And I know, how, and how, I know much, how, much, how much lime juice is that approximately? That's approximately a half ounce of lime juice. Right here. So the, the, the habanero simple syrup and the lime juice are in equal proportions, kind of, you know, like turning this a little bit between a spritz and a spritzy sour sort of territory, yes. right? Yeah, definitely. All right. So I know, I know, I know you didn't like ice in the ice in the glass before or rather after, but I'm going to add one cube. I love this method. I love this. Little little fake Mizuwari happening over here. And just give that a quick stir. 
10 stirs, 10 seconds, just to mix those elements together. All right. So interesting, you can see the ingredients actually forming one liquid from three right. as the water goes into them. It's always such a magical moment for me, you know? Happening. And because because you're going to be adding more ice and bubbles to this, you don't really need to shake this lime juice because it's going to activate when the sparkling wine hits this, right? Exactly. Right on the money. You don't have this. If you don't have a spoon, go ahead and just swirl it like your oh, your sorry. finest wine. Tell me all about the nose. Oh, and so smells forth. like yeah. smells like Cobb Franck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep filling this up with ice and I'll lock it over here. Right where we want to be. We can probably squeeze another in here. Oh, mm. you just couldn't, you just couldn't do what I needed you to do. Ice cream. Okay. Take that one. We'll take that out. All right. And we're going back to same proportions for a traditional spritz, an ounce of club soda, seltzer, soda water, and three ounces of kava. I'm telling you, doing this in a jigger, it just it just goes against my morals. When you yeah. if you make this spritz off the call, just dump it in. You you just, you know what time it is. I I sort of say for me, it's like I I I want to do it the first time and never again, you know. And I almost <laughs> want to every time I do it, I I almost want to still just go like boom, you know. There's a little bit more. You, I, I've definitely done that for a guest. You know, they're watching, they're watching you. Just like, look, that was for you. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gonna garnish this. If you've got the other half of your lime, just cut a nice, not too thick, not too thin slice. And you can either drop it right in. I'm just gonna cut a little slit about halfway up the line, rest it on my glass. And I like, I like the idea that the rest of the scotch bonnet's just gonna infuse into the cocktail over time. So I'm just gonna drop it in. Waste not, why not? And if you have another straw, feel free. We're gonna leave this solo dolo. And you got a scotch okay. glass. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> I inhaled it. Woo! <laughs> the sparkling wine is like sending the the oils like up into the air right off of the drink. It's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting crazy, mm. crazy aromatics off of oh, you're, you're right. There's just so much complex fruit. Like the all that round, warm citrus of the Aperol is there, but it's punctuated by this like funkier kind of melon flavor. And wow. Yeah, just play it plays. There's just like almost a little apple in there, but yeah, you're getting like just this tropical. Apple. Egg. Yeah. That is that is a terrific and the texture of that syrup in there. It's still light. It's still refreshing. Right. But it's just like silky smooth, really beautiful drink. Wow, that's great. What other crazy stuff have you done with spritzes? Anything anything else that's interesting of note? Definitely. Uh, I I always call this is my house. This is my home bar and I do a lot of kitchen sink cocktails. Anything that I said I was meal prepping that I'm going to eat, I probably blended it and strained it off into a syrup, into a cocktail. Um, but at Tanam, we use uh, hawthorn fruit for our version of the Aperol Spritz. Awesome. Yeah, Tell hawthorn. us a little bit more about that ingredient. Hawthorn fruit is kind of a cross between a, it's a type of berry. It's, it's a cross between strawberry and maybe a little bit of raspberry to it. Um, it's native to China and you can find it. I mean, I, I live at 99 Asian up in Malden. You can find it at most Asian markets. Um, you won't find it fresh. You're going to find it dry little slices in a bag. And we just dump out a bottle of Aperol, 
into another jar, like a wide mouth jar, mm -hmm. fill it with equal parts of hawthorn fruit. So one bag of hawthorn fruit dried to one, it can be a 750, but we use liter bottles of Aperol. And if you just let that sit for four to five days, minimum will give you the flavor, but really letting it rest for a good week and a half is gonna get you this beautiful, rich, rounded, juicy red berry flavor that doesn't, it doesn't disturb the Aperol at all. It's so crazy. It's like you can certainly taste both are happening there. Almost as if you were using Campari, like a strawberry infused Campari is always a, a really go-to infusion. It's kind of like a, a sister infusion there. Oh, awesome. I can't wait to try that. Yeah, and I mean, we, we definitely, I definitely love using spice at Tanam. Um, it's not Aperol, but we infuse young green peppercorns into Jamaican rum. We've done uh, black pepper in Applejack brandy. Just kind oh. of sometimes it feels like throwing things at the wall, but um, yeah. And then you can add a little twist to this with some, some calamansi. Uh, I haven't been able to find that in stores. It's, it's a citrus kind of a cross between a, a kumquat and a sour orange. I buy it online as a 100% juice. And you could swap out the lime juice in this spritz for calamansi as well. You can, you can play with this quite a few ways. Oh, I cannot wait to come visit you on the patio and drink all of these drinks. If anybody wants to get me a gift, they should get a gift card to Nam now so we can use it over the summer. Definitely. You know, we are, um, we are brunching hard. Patio is like, I'm very excited. I miss the sunlight. Yeah, it's got the sunlight's here. It's just like now it's got to take a, unfortunately, two months to warm up the air, but we're not complaining. We're no, 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 no. <laughs> it's summer in here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending some time with us making spritzes, Keisha. It's been a real treat. Same here, Jackson. This is dope. Uh, don't judge me. I'm probably just gonna trade off for. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely uh, get all the way into this Scotch bonnet pepper and see what the last sip is like for sure. Um, people asking if they can watch this again or any of the past shows. Yes, you can find Boston Cocktail Club on YouTube, where it will live forever. Um, and that's all the time we have. That's Cocktail Club. Thanks for joining us. Please join us. Again, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Next week's guest is Patty Hernandez from Stillwater, and we'll be making drinks with Irish whiskey. Make sure to follow the link from our sign-up page to Gordon's Wine and Spirits to pick up the Irish whiskey cocktail kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's cocktail club. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kaisha. Thank you, Jackson. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.